everyone and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk electronic invoicing add-on for Dynamics 365. My name is Evan and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this web conference through Teams Live events and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation and by participating in the session using Microsoft Teams, your name, email address, phone number, and or title may be viewable by other session participants. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please click on the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the event, and we will have some time at the end to speak to some questions verbally. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Now let's get started. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Mark Rolexi, Principal PM Manager, Gilberto Onodera, Senior Program Manager, and Ilya Kondratenko, Senior Program Manager. Merrick, over to you. Great, thank you, Evan. Welcome everybody and thank you for joining us for today's Tech Talk. My colleagues and I will spend the next hour talking, uh, taking you through explanations around the new electronic invoicing add-on for Dynamics 365. I will start with an overview of the market, then our globalization strategy and short introduction to the add-on. Then we'll look into electronic invoicing process in Egypt through end-to-end -end demo from a business user view, transitioning later to the section explaining in details all the aspects of the add-on from the admin persona perspective. After closing notes and sharing some resources, uh, we shall get some time for questions and answers. So let's start with electronic invoicing market landscape overview. Electronic invoicing is an exchange of the invoice document between a seller party who provides goods or services and a buyer of those who receives an integrated electronic document. This exchange can be done directly or with the involvement of third parties like authorities or designated agencies responsible for invoice registration and sometimes distribution. Why is electronic invoicing becoming so popular? CIOs and CFOs of companies are looking for process innovation and automation, trying to increase operational efficiency, reducing costs, but the main driver is somewhere else. Tax authorities realized some time ago that tax evasion is a huge problem. Rough estimates show that it can be even up to one third of taxes collected globally. Authorities started using electronic invoicing as a powerful tool to fight against tax fraud. What can be observed by introducing mandatory invoicing in countries with higher level of corruption or fraud first. The patterns of implementing electronic invoicing globally are quite similar and the process starts from authorities usually enforcing electronic invoicing to fight tax evasion in B2G scenarios, mainly focused on public sector and afterwards rolling, uh, rolling it into uh, other type of businesses and operations. We see these days electronic invoicing is required in one or another form in about 60 countries worldwide where this number is growing rapidly. Before jumping on the add-on, let's take a quick look at our strategy. Microsoft Dynamics Globalization offering consists of three main pillars. First, out of the box, wide country and region coverage for Dynamics 365 applications. We cover legal requirements for 42 countries and regions with specific functionality that is translated into 47 languages. We also cover regulatory compliance for all the supported countries and regions, monitoring legislation changes in those countries to release functional updates required to address them. We publish the release plan through lifecycle services to let our customers and partners discover them using issue search. We also maintain regulatory alerting service at LCS where customers and partners after joining the signated program can submit alerts and view state of those as alerts submitted by others. Our out-of-the-box globalization functionality is complemented by ISV localization solutions published at AppSource. 
currently there is more than 50 localization solutions available there and the number of those is constantly constantly growing finally our globalization functionality offers innovative extensibility model through configurable tools and services. Low or low code extensibility is a real differentiator of our globalization offering. Using these tools, power users or functional consultants can extend existing and create new configurations to customize required functions in the most frequently changing functional areas. We use those tools ourselves and the same tools are available for our customers and partners. Using configurable globalization, customers and partners are extending existing functionality, what resulted in a repository of thousands of configurations created already and used across more than 100 countries. As we have seen in the first slide, there is a lot of happening around electronic invoicing, but what does Microsoft do in particular around the invoicing and what the electronic invoicing add-on is? The answer is relatively simple. Leveraging existing configurable globalization tools like electronic reporting, we enriched the portfolio of globalization services with a new one to extend electronic invoicing capabilities and processes for Dynamics 365 applications. There were three main principles used by us while building the add-on. The extensibility model uses configurations to create formats for electronic invoice transformation and configurable integrations to enable document exchange via web services. Configurations are put all together with workflow definitions into packages to simplify the process of enabling scenarios and support the whole life cycle, starting from creation through setting it up and maintenance up to sharing the solution. The other principle was consistency. The electronic invoicing functionality has got a document audit trail, which is available for all the invoicing solutions across countries and applications. If the offered extensibility model is used in a proper way by ISVs, it provides a consistent end user experience regardless of whether functionality is built by Microsoft or an ISV. The whole complexity of using it is completely taken away from an end user. Finally, along with the add-on, we provide more of everything in electronic invoicing area. We use the configurable globalization for creating new formats to enable invoicing new countries like Egypt, but we also provide more export and import formats for existing ones. Those formats are accompanied by additional configurable integrations, both for previously available solutions like those existing for Brazilian, Brazil or Mexico, as well as entirely new like for Egypt or Italy. Please mind that some of those will be coming post general availability. We'll take a closer look at the roadmap a bit later, but for now I'd like to admit that the add-on is available for preview on 1007 PIP release that was announced on 1st of February yesterday. Uh, with having that said, I will hand it over to Ilya, who will show the demo illustrating end-to-end -end process for Egypt from business user perspective. Thank you, Marek. In the next part, we will demonstrate how to generate and submit electronic invoices in Egypt using electronic invoicing add-on. We will give the introduction about Egyptian business scenario and how to run it in the system. This demonstration assumes that the system is preliminary configured, both part electronic invoices add-on and Dynamics 365 finance. The details on how to configure the system will be provided in the following part of today's session. One important warning about the demo. The demonstration is pre-recorded and might have a lower audio volume at your end. Please increase the volume accordingly on your devices if necessary to avoid possible difficulties during listening. With that said, let's start. Electronic invoicing in Egypt. Let me give you a quick overview of business scenario about electronic invoices submission in Egypt. First of all, the company who decides to use electronic invoicing must be registered in Egyptian tax authority. 
application lead to registration number. The company gets credentials and secrets which will allow to communicate to tax authority electronic invoicing portal. Additionally, the company needs to obtain security certificate for digital signing of outgoing file of electronic invoices. The process starts in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance. There are three types of business documents, three types of invoices uh, to which electronic invoicing is applied to. This is invoices based on sales orders, pretext invoices, and project invoices. The user creates and posts one of these invoices, then starts submission process. During the submission process, electronic invoicing add-on generates the electronic invoice file in JSON format. The format will be the same for all types of business documents, and this formal is predefined by Egyptian tax authority. After this JSON file is generated, the electronic invoicing add-on digitally signed it with the obtained certificate. Then this signed document will be submitted to tax authority invoicing portal and validated there. After successful validation, tax authority assign so-called UUID or a kind of official identification of each individual document and send this UUID back to the service. Then the service update back the ERP system. And now let me show how it works in a live system. First of all, please make sure that electronic invoicing service is enabled for Dynamics 365 Finance. To check it, go to Workspaces, select Feature Management, and among all the features, find the feature responsible for this integration. Electronic invoicing add-on integration, we see that it is already enabled. So we verify that invoicing add-on is enabled in general. Then we have to verify that it is enabled for Egypt specifically. To do this, go to Organization Administration, Electronic Document Parameters. And on the features tab, you can see the list of all countries and country specific processes currently supported by Microsoft. Please find e invoicing for Egypt and enable it. It's already enabled. Now let's see how electronic invoice submission is working. Let's go to accounts receivable module and create a new sales order. Select new, select a customer, select a warehouse, and let's create a new order. Let's select this product, which is properly set up to satisfy Egyptian requirement. We have all the details. And let's save this order and generate an invoice. Okay. okay. The invoice is generated. We can have a look. Have it in invoice journal. Yes, we have this invoice posted. Let's remember its number to simplify submission. And let's submit it to Egyptian tax authority. Uh, we need to go to organization administration again and select submit electronic documents form. Okay. Make sure that resubmit documents is no because it's used for Submission of already submitted documents. 
let's uh, select our invoice we have just posted. Okay, filtered it. We can run it immediately or schedule running in batch. Let's do it immediately. You can see that some alerts appear. Yes, operation is successfully completed and one document is submitted. To see the details of the submission, we should again go to organization administration and select electronic document submission log. Okay, and the last one is our electronic invoice. If you want to inquire its details, let's go to inquiries and select submission details. Here we can find a list of processed actions. Uh, there are a lot of things to be separately discussed. There will be a dedicated part. Uh, how to set up all of these things. But let me review only some of them, the most important ones. The first one, uh, this, the first action is responsible for generation of JSON file of electronic invoice in Egyptian specific format. We can view its content. Press view button. And we can open the file. Okay, it's open and we can see our invoice in JSON format. We have several blocks, the information about the issuer, the information about the receiver, some invoice header information, and then information about invoice lines. We have only one line and some invoice totals. Then the second section is responsible for digital signing of this document. Then the third action is physical submission of the electronic invoice to Egyptian tax authority. Then we received response from tax authority. And uh, in, in fact, the submission consists of two steps. The first step is preliminary submission, obtaining this so-called UUID number. And then the second submission with this UUID number to receive the final response about was this submission successful or not. And if we select the last action and press view button again, we can review a special file. It's more or less technical, but uh, in general, we can see here that overall submission status is valid. So submission was successful. Uh, this UUID number, which we obtained uh, from the Egyptian tax authority, is stored back in the system and we can verify it. Let's go to accounts receivable again and find this invoice we have just submitted. It is in the invoice journal to the last sales order. And if we scroll to the very right, we can see this invoice UUID number obtained from tax authority. And uh, why it is important, if we further on want to adjust this invoice and issue a credit note or whatever, we have to make reference to this officially obtained number. That's pretty much it about submission of Egyptian invoices. Thank you for your attention. Okay, now let's transition to the electronic invoicing add-on deep dive. Uh, so the coverage of electronic invoice add-on extends to several countries. The service is available for all countries, but we are delivering specific configurations for those countries. For now, the configuration for those countries are in public preview. And in our next release, which is scheduled for April, we plan to GA Egypt first, and then gradually in the next releases, we will start moving to the other countries from public preview to GA, just as Mark will talk later. When it comes to 
the requirements for electronic invoicing, each country has its own particularities. Nevertheless, uh, at a certain level, they also have many requirements in common. Looking at the requirement perspective, what does the electronic invoicing process have in common among different countries and regions? So, the electronic invoice must comply with the digital format specified by the government. Uh, the electronic invoice file extension also can vary between among PDF, XML, JSON, just like Ilya show, or even TXT. In some countries, the electronic invoice must be approved by a web services normally hosted by the government or by a party accredited for this purpose. Another, con uh, another common requirement is the application of a digital signature to assure the, the identity of the electronic invoice issuer and the responsibility for storing. In some countries, it's a duty of the electronic invoice issuer to keep the electronic invoice file in case of future tax auditing. So, the electronic invoicing, electronic invoicing feature is a, key, uh, is a key element in the electronic invoicing add-on. It encapsulates all configurations required to fulfill the electronic invoice process. It allows the configuration of electronic invoice formats. It also allows the configuration of flow of actions, which defines how the electronic invoice feature must behave. It allows the configuration of the context, which defines when certain invoicing features must be executed within electronic invoice add-on. It allows the configuration of the invoice data extraction model in Dynamics 365 for submission of the invoice data to the electronic invoice add-on. And it allows the configuration of the response update in Dynamics 365 because in some scenarios, uh, the status of invoice must be updated uh, as a result of the processing uh, of the electronic invoicing add-on. So, while the electronic invoice add-on runs on the cloud, the regulatory configuration service, RCS, is the interface for configuration of invoicing features. And the global repository is the place where all invoicing features are stored. In RCS, you can browse the global repository, select and import an invoicing feature for usage. You can configure your invoicing feature. You can publish your invoicing feature to the global repository, and you can deploy the invoicing feature to your electronic invoice add-on. It's through Gout RCS that you can enter your Azure Key Vault secret and your Blob Storage secret. That's because for electronic invoice add-on, your digital certificates are managed and stored in Azure, and all your data are stored in your Azure stored ac storage account. None of your data are kept into the electronic invoice add-on database. <coughs> Another important definition, <coughs> uh, configuration providers. Configuration providers are any organizations who publish e-invoicing features into the global repository. Microsoft, for example, is a configuration provider. Uh, we publish invoicing features in the global repository, and you can browse them through RCS, import to your RCS instance and use. In the same way, in the same way, a partner, ISV, or a customer can publish invoicing features in the global repository, and if you wish, share among others organizations. So let's take a quick look in the uh, in the configure in the interface for configuration of invoicing features. So I have here a screen pre-recorded. So here I am on RCS. RCS is the the portal where you have all your uh, configurations. And then let's start. Click on global features. Click on electronic invoice features. So this is the page where you can manage all aspects or, of your invoicing feature. Uh, you have, uh, you can select your configuration provider. In the grid, you can see all your invoicing features imported to your RCS instance. 
in versions, you can manage the version of your invoicing features. In configuration setups, in configurations, you can see the file configurations of your invoice. If you want to see the structure of the file, you click on view, and then you have access to the file format where you can see all the structure of your invoice file format. On feature setups, you can configure the setups of your feature. This is the place where you define the action flow of your invoicing feature. We can edit and then you have access to the configuration of flow of actions. In this case, it's a very simple flow with one single action. And on the import, you can browse the, the global repository, explore, select an invoicing feature, and finally import into your RCS instance. So, so some of some uh, of the usage of invoicing features. Uh, some invoicing features they are ready to use. It does not require further reconfiguration. Configuration. You can simply use as is. Uh, you can simply select uh, your invoicing feature from from the repository, import, and once you import, it's ready to be deployed to your electronic invoicing add-on. Others may require a less mile configuration. For example, in some e-invoicing features, some parameters are populated with a default value. That's the case, for example, of the URL for the web services in the Brazilian invoicing feature. In this case, depending on, on, on the state where you are in Brazil, you can uh, select, you can modify this parameter and populate with another uh, URL. In other cases, you may want to create a customized invoicing feature. You may want to leverage the configuration from another invoicing feature. In this case, you can create a copy of the original feature which inherits all configuration artifacts and configurations of your original feature. Notice that you can choose from which provider you want to copy or you can copy your invoicing feature. It can be either Microsoft or uh, a partner, ISCV, or even another customer who have shared an invoicing feature with your organization. So, or if you need, you can create a completely new invoicing feature from scratch. In this case, <coughs> uh, you can you have available the same tools from electronic reporting module to build your own configuration artifacts, such as data model designer or format configuration designer. For example, Depending on your requirements, you can use the data model designer to customize an existing invoice data model, or if you need, you can create your own data model that fits into your invoicing requirements. The same is valid for the format designer. You can either customize an existing format, extending the format provided by the provider, as well you can create an entire new format configuration. And when it comes to the flow of actions, <coughs> sorry, you can also customize or create a new one. In both options, you have available a library of actions which allows you to customize or build your own flow of actions. Once all your invoicing features uh, are saved into the global repository, uh, you can share the invoicing feature with an organization. When you do this, when you do that, you are allowing this organization to import and use that particular invoicing feature you publish into the global repository. Uh, you can do this uh, throughout this share option bot button. And if you want to uh, stop sharing, you have an option to unshare uh, your invoicing feature. So now let's take a look on some of the steps that need to be done to allow your RCS to connect to electronic invoice add-on. Your RCS must be configured to find the electronic invoice add-on in the web. You have to enter in the URLs for the services. At this moment, we have four different URLs which, be, which will be provided, one for each Azure 
uh, Azure Geography, where the electronic invoicing add-on will be de will be deployed. We have two Azure geographies in, in United States, and we have more two geographies in Europe. So those uh, the complete URLs they are uh, available in the documentation of electronic invoice add-on available in Microsoft Docs. So now let's take a look on setup uh, that you have to do on, on the side of Dynamics 365. As Ilya already shown, you have to enable the feature in feature management. Second, you have to enter in, in Dynamics 365 the URL for the electronic invoice add-on. And last, you have to enable the electronic invoicing feature that you want to use. In this case, for example, we are representing the invoicing feature for Egypt. Now, how does the interface, the, uh, the user experience changes when uh, the electronic invoice add-on is enabled? So here we have three new forms uh, available for the user, available on this in the menu organization administration. Uh, we have one form for electronic invoice parameters, and we have one form for submission, and we have one form for uh, visualization of, of the submission logs. So <coughs> the submission logs, uh, the form where, you sub where, 360, where Dynamics 365 submits invoice data to, to electronic invoice add-on can be run in two modes. Uh, immediately, where you simply enter your in, uh, invoice numbers, or you can schedule a, uh, a, a job and run the submission process in background. So then when you hit OK, when you click OK, then what happens when you submit invoices from Dynamics 365? In fact, what Dynamics 365 sends to electronic invoice add-on are invoice are business data that represents the invoice. Dynamics 365 does not need to know to each part to which particular invoicing feature to send in order to process the submission. That's because the business data incorporates on itself the attributes for doing the selection. The electronic invoice add-on takes the responsibility to self-resolve which invoicing feature must process each received business data. Based on the context criteria defined in the invoicing feature, here called applicability rules, the invoicing feature matches the business data and determines the right feature setup for each submission request. Once the electronic invoice feature is determined, the, proce the processing of the business da data takes place. The actions defined in the flow of actions configured on the feature setup are executed one by one and the files are generated by the electronic reporting engine, which reads the file format configuration and produces the output files. In the cases where the communication with a web services is required, the flow of action can apply a digital signature to the electronic invoice file and then initiate the communication with the web services. The web services response are received and imported into the electronic invoice add-on and its contents are parsed. parsed. For last, uh, in the scenarios where Dynamics 365 needs to be updated with the response from the web services, the invoicing features updates the response back in Dynamics 365. And then this is uh, more details about the, the, the page where you can view uh, the details of the submission logs. So here we have a breakdown of the execution logs. Each line on this grid represents one of, the, one of the actions configured in the flow of actions and its status of completeness. In the middle of the page, you can see uh, the results of each action in the action flow. In this case, the output is, is a file and then uh, throughout these options, you can download the file and view its contents. And at the bottom, you can see the final response uh, from the web services. In this case, it's representing uh, the approval stamp from the government web services. 
So now I will, will transition to the closing notes. Thank you very much, Gilberto. Uh, so uh, as I promised earlier, uh, I would be providing some more insights into the roadmap. And here we go. So j just in front of us in April 2021, we plan to make generally available the add-on with all the covered in deep dive section capabilities. All those are used to provide the globalization features and the first one that is coming with the add-on is a brand new solution for Egypt with configurable formats and integration to Egyptian tax authority. That has been disclosed in the 2021 re release wave one plan published back in January. Starting from July, we plan to provide more country solutions with additional capabilities. Just to name a few, new export and import of Brazilian service fiscal document in Abras format, together with um, municipality integration, or later on the Italian e-invoice in Fatura PA format with the new configurable integration to Italian tax administration. Please mind that um, it illustrates our current view of the release plans and it is subject to change without notice. The more precise plans listing uh, all the other countries will be published along the way in release notes. Next slide, please. Yeah, so let's summarize in the form of key takeaways the, the benefits of the electronic invoicing add-on. Configurable formats, integrations and packaging play an instrumental role in enabling no and low code extensibility of, of invoicing solutions. All those solutions built by Microsoft, ISVs and partners will be offered with the same consistent experience regardless of the country origin they, cor they correspond to. And last but not least, the add-on is coming with richer out-of-the-box functionality consisting of new formats and integrations provided by Microsoft. Before we go for Q&A session, if applicable, I would like to share with you uh, information about available resources. There is a landing page which have been available for quite a while. And at this moment, it's being updated with the most recent changes. So we expect the content uh, updated uh, appearing uh, on Microsoft Docs site tonight. And uh, if uh, you have any additional questions you'd like to provide some feedback or contact us directly, there is a mailbox which you can see here, so an alias, uh, so we, I encourage everyone to send an inquiry uh, using that channel, or uh, we have also devoted to electronic invoicing Yammer channel, but for the Yammer group, it's important to mention that despite it's um, already open for public preview, uh, it's still available under Insider and PIP group members. So you would need to, to sign up first. So with having that said, yeah, um, we can spend some time on questions and answers. I saw few of those already coming and uh, already answered in, in public. But let's review what else we would come, come up with. There is a question, uh, will the applicability rules be extensible and configurable? So that that is not really tied with a legal entity. Uh, here, uh, Gilberto demonstrated uh, some examples and some uh, features in the slides. 
uh, related to applicability rules, but uh, I will uh, explain a bit more here. The thing that we are bringing functionality that uh, allows uh, everybody, uh, customers who will be using this service, this add-on, uh, to configure it the way that it will cover much wider scenarios. And uh, besides uh, just to uh, adding or removing some existing applicability rules that we are giving out of the box in uh, our uh, in the features that we provide, you can add any type of information there and any data from a vendor. How it works? Uh, you need uh, on a vendor side to set up so-called we call that context where you can put uh, any fields with any data and this part is fully configurable uh, that you want uh, to consider as a, some type of context of the document example is uh, you can say that this document is generated in the particular legal entity uh, for the particular document type and you send this document to the service uh, to uh, invoicing add-on. Invoicing add-on based on applicability rules uh, and you can set up it there, it can uh, decide what feature should be picked and executed for the document with this context. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, as soon as this context is extensible, and uh, you can bring any data, uh, such scenarios like sending document to the group of customers or to particular customer can all also easily be set up without any single line of code, just configuring on F and DOS side and on Adobe side. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, Dimitri. So that that was a good answer. So uh, I see another question. Does uh, the add-on need 10.0.17 version? Uh, so uh, we have been running uh, private and public preview for quite a while on earlier versions, but uh, in order to use the add-on with the current available uh, capabilities, yeah. Uh, uh, in a version that we plan to make generally available, it requires 10.0.17 version. So while we are reviewing questions which are still appearing, uh, I have a few questions collected from the previous session and I would look into those as well. So um, is the add-on available in tier one environment? And so that's quite a common question. Yeah, And since the add-on uses the common Microsoft microservices platform, uh, which does not provide that possibility, uh, it's necessary to use at least T2 environment to enable the add-on through lifecycle services. Yeah, so question from this session. In module of customer, there is an option of electronic invoices. What is this option for? So in general, electronic invoices or electronic invoicing is not completely new to Dynamics 365. So in Dynamics 365 finance and supply chain and so on, uh, there was possibility to um, use electronic reporting configurations and after setting up the system in accounts receivable exactly to enable the, the process to export um, posted invoices into electronic form. So uh, there wasn't anything in regards to transportation of those created documents in FNO, but uh, the, the option is there and will remain there for sure for, for quite a while. Okay, so let me review the questions from the previous session. 
I think that this one might be interesting for participants. What will the licensing model look like for this feature? So uh, licensing and pricing for the electronic uh, invoicing add-on has not been yet determined and will be disclosed publicly about 30 days ahead of GA, which is currently targeting uh, April 2021. So there was um, at least several questions uh, regarding uh, possible ways of handling attachments, how, how the invoice attachments files are handled in the solution, whether the uh, SharePoint server is needed when embedding PDF files into XML file and, and so on. So in order to address that, electronic invoice attachments are handled as embedded binary data in XML elements. So SharePoint server is not needed for embedding PDF files, but the attachment must be stored in FNDO document management system before. Right? And it, the same applies uh, to the scenario when we are considering incoming vendor, vendor invoice. Yeah, so those um, binary elements, PDF files or whatever type of other attachments uh, would be saved to DMS table, tables. Okay, so there is a question. Uh, when is the plan to onboard other Azure regions like UK? So actually, and uh, that's something what we are reviewing and uh, mm, we'll be making that information available soon. So Dmitry, if you have any most up to date as of today uh, information, please, please share. Yes, our plan is to watch uh, consumption of the service and uh, uh, taking into account interest from the partners and customers from different regions, uh, start deploying there. Uh, technically, we are not uh, limited right now uh, to deploy to, for example, UK region and some other regions. Yes, but uh, we have a decision to and uh, deploy that uh, step by step, yes, and uh, as it is mentioned in the documentation and in the slides uh, that we are starting with um, uh, some US regions and uh, uh, European regions. Uh, so uh, if you consider that uh, this is something that you will be looking into and it's important for you, now please contact us and we will discuss uh, deployment to your region. So one more question. I believe that to some extent it was at least partially addressed. So the question is about uh, other type of documents. So if we create a new document through through this, will the framework be able to deliver the document to the customer? And whether the Microsoft plan to include other documents uh, than invoice in the nearest future. So. Uh, the add-on has been created with primary goal of electronic invoice exchange and that exchange um, is configurable as we uh, already described. Yeah, so it depends uh, what would be available on the customer side or on the recipient side, whether it is um, whether the document is um, uh, whether it is possible to send the document uh, directly to a customer or like you know through any other intermediary uh, in order to transport and to end the document between uh, the parties. So regarding the uh, documents uh, other than invoices. Uh, currently, there is no plan to extend the coverage with other type of those out of the box as of now. Uh, however, we are collecting feedback uh, and we will be shaping our future investments accordingly. 
So I believe that everyone uh, has already understood that the feature is using electronic reporting designer through RCS. So it is uh, flexible and configurable enough to handle any type of documents, including custom tables, data sources. So then uh, even that means that even if something is not provided out of the box from Microsoft, then uh, it's uh, it's possible to, to be created by even power user without necessity of um, involving developer. So one more, I see the question regarding uh, ability to attach the PDF version of the invoice as embedded document. So as, as I said before, yes, uh, so with assumption and as a prerequisite uh, of having that PDF document um, uh, saved in uh, document management system on the FNDO side, then it is possible to, to uh, export it along with the other business data sent to the service, which would uh, using uh, configurations there, right? Transform that in in a in an expected right or desired form. Okay, uh, I don't see more questions coming. So with that, I will be handing off back to you, Ivan. Thank you very much all for attending this session. Perfect, thank you, Merrick. Uh, we would like to get your feedback on today's session. I've posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We value your feedback and welcome your input on how we did today and what you would like to see in future sessions. That survey scores on a scale from one to five, with five being the highest score possible, and we thank you for your participation in that. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and a thank you to our audience for logging in and joining us today. Please stay safe and have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. Goodbye. <laughs>